Now we are moving on to sports injuries. We have seen the injuries to the bones and injuries to the joints and injuries to the nerves. And what we are going to see now is injuries to the ligaments. And usually when we say the, the word sports injury means it is injuries to the muscles and ligaments. Okay. And where are the ligaments? They are the ligaments are usually around the joints. So giant injuries are otherwise uh, uh, when, when you discuss the joint injuries you will come to know the uh, injuries to the ligaments and the commonly uh, uh, sustained sports injuries are injuries to the knee, shoulder, elbow, wrist and hand. It is easy which we have already seen yesterday and we can uh, add some more points. Look at this picture. This picture gives you a lot of information. This picture gives you lot of information, lot of anatomy questions. This is the opened up knee and uh, this is lateral and this is medial. You, you have uh, two ligaments, medial collateral ligament and lateral collateral ligament on the side and in between inside the joint you have two ligaments, anterior cruciate ligament and posterior cruciate ligament and th these two bones have a uh, contact with each other, uh, this femur with tibia and in between you have a shock absorber, some uh, spacer and that is medial and lateral meniscus. So this uh, medial and lateral meniscus, medial and lateral collateral ligament and anterior and posterior cruciate ligaments are four important ligaments for the stability of the knee because the hip is a ball and jacket joint. It is inherently stable whereas knee is something like this, something like knee joint is something like this, see one over another. It is not stable, it can uh, fall uh, out at any time. So how it is being stabilized? It is stabilized by the presence of ligaments and two ligaments on the medial and lateral side and one ligament to take care of the anteroposterior movement. So there are four movements possible on a, in this setting. So in order to prevent the medial movement, you have a medial collateral ligament and the lateral side, this is mid, mid line, this is medial collateral ligament and this is lateral collateral ligament. The collateral ligament takes care of lateral uh, side movement. And okay, what ligament is stabilizing from preventing from anteroposterior movement? It is cruciate ligament. And since they cross each other like this, it is known as cruciate. Cruciate means cruciate incision, crossing each other, crucial movement, crucifixion of Jesus. So it means cross. So two ligaments are crossing each other, that is known as cruciate ligament, and they take care of anteroposterior movement. Okay, with this four for uh, uh, I mean ligaments, the knee is stabilized and this one gives um, medial meniscus and gives, uh, a so, uh, it secretes fluid, it gives uh, more wider space to have a contact and it also absorbs shock and we will see one by one, we will see one by one. Okay, look at the same picture, this is medial, medial meniscus is a bigger one compared to the uh, lateral meniscus and it is semicircular, this is nearly circular. And look at this, it covers only maybe 50 percent of the tibial uh, articular surface. See, this is, this is, but whereas me, the middle uh, lateral meniscus covers most of the articular surface. Though it is small, though it is small, it's, it covers most of the articular surface, but though it is big, it, it is, does not cover the, uh, cover most of the uh, uh, surface. The other important thing you should uh, not forget is that look at this medial meniscus, it is attached to the tibial or medial collateral ligament. So it is bound to that whereas the lateral meniscus is not attached to the lateral collateral ligament and you have one muscle popliteus muscle which is intra articular muscle. The popliteus muscle is within the joint, okay. The popliteus tendon is within the joint and the lateral meniscus is not attached to the lateral collateral ligament, it is free. Whereas medial collateral, medial meniscus is attached to the medial collateral ligament. Since the medial collateral ligament is attached to the medial meniscus, medial meniscus cannot move on it freely on its own. So any any danger, any dangerous situations, lateral meniscus easily can escape. Whereas medial meniscus cannot escape because it is bound to some structure. So in that case, it is bound to get injured because it cannot escape from the danger. So medial meniscus injury is much more common than lateral meniscus injury. This I just told you, this is anterior and this is posterior. You have anterior cruciate ligament and posterior cruciate ligament crossing each other and giving rise to anteroposterior stability. I think I will get back pain. 
look at this yeah crochet a collateral ligament i told you two two side medial and lateral collateral ligament La medial collateral ligament uh, supports medial side and lateral collateral ligament sup support lateral side how do you test that medial collateral ligament is intact or injured you flex the knee to 90 degree look at the picture flex the knee to 90 degree you apply valgus stress if the ligament is uh, torn the knee will open up similarly you apply bar stress and if the ligament is injured or torn it will open up so that is known as valgus stress test or varus stress test by stressing the ligament you can find out whether ligament is injured or whether ligament is intact okay in the collateral ligament provide sideward stability coming to the cruciate ligament cruciate ligaments provide antero posterior stability so you have a femur on top tibia on and uh, 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 below so the anterior cruciate ligament prevents the anterior movement of the tibia and similarly posterior cruciate ligament prevents posterior movement of the tibia on femur okay it is the movement of the tibia tibia on femur okay so prevents anterior translation of the tibia on femur so this is this is anterior cruciate ligament and this is posterior cruciate ligament yeah the, the, this uh, yeah this will tell you see four ligaments four on all the around and giving the knee support so this is tibial uh, collateral ligament and this is fibular collateral ligament that is lateral and this is anterior posterior cruciate ligament so they uh, support you in all possible directions okay anterior cruciate ligament is a primary restraint and uh, to uh, restraining force for tibia if anterior cruciate ligament last there is not there the anterior uh, tibia may move anteriorly so and primary restraint to anterior tibial displacement see this is the it has two bundles see any ligament can be injured in the ankle in the knee joint but more common injured uh, li ligament is anterior cruciate ligament acl injury acl injury is a more commonly injured ligament two bundles you have a antero medial bundle and post lateral bundle it has two bundles the antero medial bundle stabilizes the knee in flexion and post medial bundle uh, flexes i mean stabilizes the knee in extension this is very important It means that the uh, anterior cruciate ligament stabilizes the knee in all movements it stabilizes in the flexion it stabilizes in the extension so throughout the movement the acl acl takes care of the stability you understand so in in, in extension also you cannot bring the tibia anteriorly in flexion also you cannot bring the tibia anteriorly so throughout the movement acl keeps the tibia with the femur it is not allowing the tibia to move in any of the angle of the movement you understand so it is what is the problem if the person gets at uh, acl injury the patient patient may not be able to climb the uh, 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 climb down the stairs comfortably the patient will have a very difficulty in coming down downhill walking downhill and how do you treat any ligaments the ligament you cannot suture the ligament it will never heal so the ligaments needs to be reconstructed so once the ligament is torn you have to take other some other graft and replace with that so what we commonly use is patella tendon patella tendon is in front of the knee joint you can use the strip of a patella tendon and replace with it or other commonly used tendons are hamstring tendon that is semi tendinosus and gracilis these are the two tendons we use for reconstructing the acl anterior cruciate ligament okay how do we get it this is the common mechanism this is the common mechanism you get um, anterior cruciate ligament injury so some in, in the contact sports kabaddi soccer or rugby what happens the the, the opposite, opposite team people come and hit you in a lateral direction so it is the force is always here nobody come and hit you here that is why you get only medial collateral ligament injury not lateral collateral ligament injury so medial collateral ligament is commonly injured ligament somebody when come and hit you the valgus force is applied and knee opens up medially the first structure which opens up is see the first structure to open up is medial collateral ligament mcl once the mcl is torn the next structure is anterior cruciate ligament okay first if this one tears then medial collateral i mean anterior cruciate ligament tears two over sometime what happens if you look carefully it is not that you are keeping the thigh and open it it is not the entire the weight of the patient is the entire weight of the patient is borne by this joint so about 80 90 kg is traveling through this knee joint so when it opens up it has the, the femur crushes the tibia so in between vas structure is there meniscus 
okay the meniscus i just told you meniscus is tightly bound so it it is inherently at risk of getting crushed so you get medial collateral ligaments then anterior cruciate ligament then medial meniscus injury all three can be injured in a same sitting so most commonly the, this is the first valgus force when it hits or you see this picture direction of the force is applied first it tears the medial collateral mcl then it tears the acl and in between in a fra it is not happening see one today medial meniscus yeah, mcl is injured and tomorrow acl no it is happening in a fraction of second so during that anything can happen the weight is crushing the medial medial meniscus so during that fraction of second you get mcl you get acl and you get medial meniscus all three will be injured and that is known as unhappy or terrible triad of odonog odonog it is uh, it is usually a combination of all these three cmcl acl and the medial meniscus injury all three is known as terrible triad of odonog so this is how it happens so first is minimal when the force is minimal you get only mcl when the force is much more you get acl and medial meniscus understand so how do you how do you diagnose that uh, diagnose acl injury it is to you know very well the acl function is to prevent the anterior movement of the tibia so put the patient like that you try to pull the tibia towards you if you can pull it it means acl is torn if you cannot pull it acl is intact that's all you know very well that you have anteromedial and postlateral bundles are there its function is to stabilize the knee in all directions in flexion as well as in extension so if the patient is you know, uh, uh, injured some few weeks ago the pain swelling would have subsided that case you can flex up to 90 degree and do the anterior dryer test this is known as anterior dryer test you can flex up to 90 degree and try to pull that tibia and uh, elicit anterior dryer test in acute lingoni patient has sustained injury now patient have hemorrhosis severe pain and swelling you cannot flex the 90 degree it is not possible patient have a severe pain in that case you should put the patient in a comfortable position like this so you keep the knee in extension maybe around 30 degree of flexion then you do that and that test is known as lackman test okay and the third one is pivot shift test pivot shift is a functional test it is for a chronic anterolateral instability all three will tell you whether acl is normal or intact i am going to tell you one by one yeah anterior dry test this is how you do anterior dry test you flex the knee for 45 degree and sorry hip 45 and knee 90 degree you have to pull uh, the knee towards you and the if the tibia comes to you more than 8 or 6 mm it means it is abnormal so anterior dry is positive or this is yeah this is anterior dryer test okay and this is in acutely injured patients you cannot flex the knee to 90 degree in that case you just flex only 10 or 15 degrees be 20 degree you can flex you will see the same test but that test is known as lackman test and this is a pivot shift test pivot shift test okay lackman test you don't need to flex the see just the 30 or 20 the but angle is but usually minimal and most sensitive among these three test lackman test is most sensitive test and it can be performed in a severely injured patient in acute patient also you can do see if the ligament is torn and you can the, the tibia will go up so that is the modification of anterior dry test you understand this good so pivot shift test there are 20 different ways to do this test so you cannot remember every uh, method how they do and all so it is inability this is instability associated with acl tear once acl is torn the joint become unstable it will move in all directions so the you you can uh, elicit the instability it is a most functional test for a chronic tear chronic tear you can do this this is pivot shift test structural integrity of the collateral ligament are tested by collateral ligament is you have a lateral mean side so this is midline medial collateral ligament lateral collateral ligament so the collateral ligaments how do you find out the collateral ligament uh, stability whereas in what it is that no no not full it's 30 degree flexion 30 degree flexion only you can do the collateral ligament test because in extension the acl will come into uh, stability so you cannot exclude acl and postero lateral corner structures it is very very difficult so you when you keep 
about 30 degree these uh, ligaments are relaxed you can test only the collateral ligament so about 30 degree flexion only 30 degree flexion only you can do the collateral ligament testing okay you cannot uh, do in full extension because acl posterior cruciate ligament posterolateral corner ligaments are tight they will be taking care of it so it is very difficult to fi find out uh, collateral ligament alone so when you want to isolate the collateral ligament you should flex the knee about 30 degree then only you can do it injury from the lateral side of the knee with inter fracture in the intercondylar see when when the force is hitting you laterally when the force is hitting you from lateral side what is the first structure to be lost medial collateral ligament but he gives you fracture in the intercondylar area what is there in the intercondylar area tbl spine what is that structure which is attached to the tbl spine cruciate ligament so anterior cruciate ligament so injury from lateral side of the knee with the fracture of the intercondylar area which structure is injured anterior cruciate ligament and now we can say also medial collateral ligament okay so for me i can go for two options acl and mcl acl and mcl you can go for it twisting injury of knee in a flexed position would result in all except what ligaments we have seen so far medial collateral ligament medial meniscus and acl okay so a b and c a b and c they are asking the other way that what is the terrible triad of Pudonov. Okay, lateral collateral ligament injury is very very rare because nobody come and hit you here and we do not fall like this. When you fall like this only you are stretching the collateral, fibular collateral ligament. Usually we fall like this. Then you are stretching the middle collateral ligament. So obviously when twisting injury in a flexed knee would result in all threes but it is very rare to get a fibular collateral ligament or lateral collateral ligament injury. So the answer is what? D. Yeah, it is the other other term. Other otherwise they are asking the word or not in a different way. That's all. You understand this? Fine. What would be the most reliable test or most sensitive test to diagnose ACL? It is always Lachman test. Yeah, very good. Pivot shift test. Pivot shift test is the most functional test, and that is for a anterolateral instability of the knee for a chronic unstable knee joint. Okay, meniscus. Meniscus, we have already seen that it is a spacer between these two femur and tibia. It has a one important function that it increases the surface contact area so that the stress is uh, diffused, I mean dispersed. Number one, number two, it secretes fluids that uh, that <coughs> synovial fluid that adds lubrication and it absorbs shock. And why it is known as meniscus? Why meniscus is called meniscus? So today is Women's Day, no? Yeah. Why, why menses, men, menstruation, why menses is called menses? It comes once in, once in 28 days, that is lunar cycle, moon, menses, menarche, everything is related to lunar. So, this, this, this mens, meniscal cartilage is otherwise known as semi-lunar cartilage, lunar, lunar is moon, no? So, it, it comes once in 28 days, it is some quite interesting thing. The meniscus is named meniscus because it 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 is a it is related to something moon. Okay, it has a cushion effect. Sorry, what is this function? See, look at this medial meniscus. Medial meniscus is larger, semicircular, and lateral meniscus is smaller, but it covers most of the area of the tibial uh, articular surface, and it is medial meniscus is more less mobile because it is attached to the medial collateral ligament so because it is less mobile because it is attached to the medial menis, mcl it is not freely uh, it cannot freely escape from the danger so any danger comes the lateral meniscus easily escapes whereas this cannot and sustains injury okay so that is why the medial meniscus uh, uh, injury is more common compared to lateral meniscus injury and yeah that is fine it is smaller circular and that is semicircular good Okay. The other thing you want to know is that meniscus is not totally avascular. Look at this picture. This is white. Sorry, this is white and this is red and this is the meniscal structure. Here, the outer part of the meniscus is richly supplied by blood whereas the inner part is 
why it means it is not innermost is a vascular and this region may have a blood supply but it is less so for a any healing you need blood supply is it not blood supply without blood supply no injury will heal so any tear in this region even if you repair even if you suture it will never heal because there is no blood so if you have a tear in the outer uh, uh, area you can suture it it will heal so the uh, zone which zone the injury is based on that you can devise a treatment method outer zone it is red zone fully vascular area you can suture and that is known as meniscal repair meniscal raphe and if the injury is inner zone even if you suture it will never heal the treatment is not repair you have to remove it you have to remove it so meniscectomy is the option for inner zone injuries and meniscal repair is an option for outer zone injuries yeah this is uh, this are anatomy question i don't think it is important this is how you get meniscal injury you when a partially flexed knee when a rotational force is applied this is why you get see the entire body of the feet of the patient is traveling through the single joint that is knee joint okay when he suddenly slips rotates when he is flying with the tip of the toe on the floor the entire weight is traveling through one limb and when he suddenly slip in a partially flexed knee when he suddenly rotates it the rotational force of the femur will crush on the tibia and it will crush the soft structure that is medial meniscus that is the common in, uh, mode of injury for rotational force on the partially flexed knee is the culprit to crush and, and nibble the medial meniscus okay it can both meniscus can injure since the medial meniscus is bound it cannot slip so it bears the brunt okay most common type is longitudinal tear i think the yeah this is the meniscus and look at this this is the most common type of tear and longitudinal tear when the tear has happen completely after you move the, the the parts will will depart will separate like this this is the immediate tear after some time it will uh, uh, separate from each other and looks like a bucket handle so bucket handle tear is the commonest type longitudinal tear and and the longitudinal tear will separate each other and they make a bucket handle like a situation these tears are these tears are very uh, uh, radial type uh, and then the flap like tear, uh, tears are rare but this is the commonest one and yeah how what could be the patient's complaint patient will come and give you complaints of locking locking is you flex the knee to some extension and you cannot extend it it is locked in flexion you cannot extend it because the meniscus the displaced meniscal fragment will trap between the two bones I mean femur and tibia it block the movement mechanical blocking so once it blocks you cannot extend it so any foreign body any loose bodies can block any tumor can block it but most commonly the locking is done by be torn displaced meniscus okay and giving way patient may not be able to having a comfortable secure walking and recurrent episodes of effusion so how do you test it you test by two test mcmurray's test and apley's grinding test but the best test to diagnose any sports injury is arthroscopy how do you select your uh, girlfriend you, do you select by looking at the facebook profile picture no because they have all sort of a uh, photoshopping work so you cannot rely on a photo you have to go and see the girl in her own ward whether how she is so it is something like uh, looking at picture when you take mri it gives you a picture only it is not a true uh, idea so you go see directly how do you see directly that is arthroscopy you insert a probe into the joint and look at the joint all are all around so the best investigation for any ligament injury any sports injury is through arthroscopy when the facilities are not available and next best is mri scan so you can take x ray to rule out any fractures any fractures but it is the first one but to diagnose ligament injury mri is advisable but the gold standard is arthroscopy it is something like looking at a person directly and looking at the picture looking at the photo mri is a photo it may miss some important findings 
So, arthroscopy is the best, next best is the MRI. If you do not find MRI, if you do not find arthroscopy in the options, go for MRI. If there is an arthroscopy, go for arthroscopy. Yeah, McMurray, there are two tests I told you to diagnose meniscal injury. One is McMurray's test, the other is Apley's, Apley is the textbook, na? They, the Apley uh, ortho textbook, that is the same Apley, Apley's textbook. So, you put the patient on a supine position like this and flex the knee and rotate internally and externally. When you do internal rotation, you find, diagnose lateral meniscal injury. When you do external rotation, you find out medial meniscal injury. So, make more stressed to find out medial and lateral meniscal injury. Okay? The patient during that moment, the patient will complain of pain or click like sound will be there. So, that is the positive finding. Or apple is grinding test is put the patient on a prone position, flex the knee same and you just do the same movement, rotation movement. And that movement will produce click like sound and pain. Yeah, what is the treatment? If a 60 year old lady comes to you with a meniscal injury, what is the treatment? You are not going to do any treatment because the patient will be already in an athlete, I mean uh, osteoarthritic patient, you do not need to do. And partial meniscectomy, if the injury is within the inner co uh, inner zone, you cannot so, so, uh, heal, it will never heal, you have to go for a meniscectomy. And meniscal repair, if the injury is in the outer segment, you have to do it. For this, this treatment should be done for all young aspiring athletes, you should not ignore. Yeah, what is your answer? This question has been asked umpteen number of times. This is one example. Last need lot of questions have been asked in a similar way. Okay. So, it is less mobile that is why it is affected fine. Anterior test is SEL. I, uh, uh, what position will you keep the anterior triad test? Yeah, hip is a 90 degree flexion. Sorry, knee is a 90 degree flexion and the movement should be at least 6 to 8 millimeter. When you pull that tibia, it should come at least 6 to 8 millimeter. Before that 2, 3 millimeter normally anyone, any one of us will get it. So, it should be at least 6 to 8 millimeter. Translation should be there and you should keep the knee 90 degree and you should relax the hamstring muscle. Make more stress to his positive in what injury? Why medial meniscus alone? It is two many both meniscus. See both Apley and McMurray, both test test both meniscus. It is not only for medial and lateral. No, it is for both one a P B P G A being P G A test. We should opt for a more one, more than one option. Which type of injury ka damage? Semi lunar. Semi lunar is meniscus, meniscal cartilage. So semi lunar cartilage. Uh, yeah, it is. You should remember that picture. Partially flexed knee. Rotational force. So, what is your answer now? Yeah, B. Testing injury and locking. Locking can happen most commonly by displaced meniscal injury. So, the answer is most likely the diagnosis is meniscal tear. Locking means meniscus only. Bucket handle tear is because of the injury to the meniscus. Which are the following meniscal tear? Meniscectomy will be the more sensible option. Yeah, it is for the inner zone. Anterior cruciate ligament tear, which test, which are positive? Okay, how many, how many options? Lackman, anterior dryer, two only. Okay, posterior dryer test is, sorry, posterior dryer test is for posterior cruciate ligament injury, very rare. And McMurray and Apley are for medial and Lateral meniscus injury. Investigation of choice in sports injury of knee. The best is arthroscopy. Next best is MRI. Now we are going to see the bursa around the knee joint. The bursa around the knee joint. What is the bursa? It is a sac uh, lined by similar to sine wave and it is located around the joint to reduce the friction between the uh, traveling muscles tendons. If two muscles are, uh, are going in the same direction, when they move, it will rub and create some friction and tendinitis. In order to avoid, you have a bursa in between as a uh, spacer. It, it, it uh, smoothen the movement. That is the idea. Okay. This function is reduced the friction. If bursa surround the knee joint. Look at this picture. This is pre-petalar bursa, supra and infra-petalar bursa. And what is this? This is 
the parsa around the semi membranosus muscle the semi membranosus is on the medial side okay and anserin bursa what is anserin bursa i think yeah this is anserin bursa you have on the medial side anteromedial side gracilis semi membranous semi tendinosus and sartorius all three muscle come and insert bus anserin bursa is look like a bird, bird's feet it looks like a bird's feet something like this bird's feet you have a three muscle one two three gets inserted and in between you have a bursa so sartorius gracilis semi t semi tendinosus all three uh, 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 inserting in the same side same place that is the upper part of the uh, medial aspect of the tibia where they insert so that area you have a bursa that is known as pis anserinus bursa and semi membranosus have a separate bursa if you look at the picture carefully and you can find out that semi membranosus has a separate bursa see semi membranosus has a separate bursa so here tendons of gracilis sartorius and temitendinosus make anserin bursa okay so this is peripetlar this is suprapetlar this is infrapetlar yeah you can see see pis anserin tendinosus semi t gracilis sartorius you can make some mnemonic and semi membranous as a separate bursa okay there are some uh, names servant mates knee is you know this and all uh, i mean i don't want to waste my time prepetlar bursa it is clergyman infrapetlar and pes sensorin as i told you three muscle and student's elbow body crown bursa it is because you keep the elbow flex for longer time you apply pressure and that will uh, 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 damage the uh, structure and uh, the swelling becomes bigger and bunion is over the fifth metatarsal Uh, and what we was bottom we are here nowadays only have power uh, a power loom here here people are sitting at the home and lo doing the lo looming activity a lot of the silk sarees and all woven uh, by the people sitting at the home the which part of the bone which is contacting the floor when you sit on the floor ischial tibia is ischial tibia is the one which is pressing on the floor so when you sit for longer time the ischial tibia is the the there is a bursa that get gets inflamed and that will produce uh, swelling that is known as weaver's bottom vv okay yeah this is the bunion yeah this is at the la middle aspect of the metatarsal phalangeal joints of the thumb mtb joint sometime the lateral aspect the fifth metatarsal get, can get involved that is known as tailor's bunion because the people who are doing tailoring activity there will be a strip which is just pressing that area and people who are using uh, tight uh, narrow box shoes no narrow box shoes they also can get this okay and this is known as bunionet because it is smaller one bunionet or tailless bunion and this is bunion okay fine this kiel bursitis is also known as weaver's bottom and i forgot to tell you that you have a trochanteric bursa usually these are bursitis just inflammation they rarely get infected whereas the trochanteric bursa they usually get infected by tuberculous organism so tb bursitis means it is always trochanteric tt trochanter tuberculosis trochanteric bursitis is caused by tuberculosis okay that is one additional information you should not forget bunion is commonly seen at greater toe of the metatarso phalangeal joint these are a simple question see sometime in very simple question you should never miss peripetlar bursitis house mate clergyman is infrapetlar and uh, and the uh, tailless knee uh, tailless bursa tailless knee no tailless bursa actually tailless bursa is the fifth metatarsal tubercular bursa i i think there is some some mistake tubercular bursa is trochanteric bursa which of the following is medial situated i told you house mate is anterior and uh, maran becker is posterior and clergyman is again anterior but deeper okay so which is medial this and three muscles are involved what are they yeah see this is anterior this is supra anterior infra anterior this is medial you have three muscles gracilis semi tendinosus and sartorius semi membranous will have they have separate now we are moving to ankle joint now knee joint is over now we are moving to ankle joint ankle joint very uh, most commonly injured uh, joint in our body okay usually in the knee joint you fall like this or somebody come and hit you 
So medial structures are involved. Whereas in the ankle joint, you fall like this. So what is the structure on the lateral side? So lateral, no, 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 delta, delta in the medial side. So lateral ligaments, lateral ankle ligaments are injured, not the medial ligaments. So in the, the ankle, knee joint, it is a medial structure injured. In the ankle joint, it is lateral structures are injured. Okay. And look at the picture. You have a two collateral ligament, medial uh, collateral ligament and lateral collateral ligament. Medial collateral ligament is, there is not delta ligament, that is stronger ligament. Stronger ligament, it won't be injured. Whereas lateral collateral ligament are weaker and they will be injured. And you don't need to worry about that, that this, uh, I mean, the fibers because they won't ask you superficial and deep. And uh, it is a complex actually. It is a, uh, uh, delta ligament is a complex of ligaments. You have a fibers, anterior tibia, navicular, tibio talar, tip, uh, tibio talar and all. And lateral, lateral is the weaker part. And the weaker part, which is the weakest is anterior tibio, I mean anterior talofibular. See, fibula means lateral. You can easily remember. Fibula means lateral. So, anterior talofibular. If it is talo tibial, it is it comes in the medial side. Okay, so anterior talo fibular ligament is the weakest ligament and most often injured. This is this has been asked in so many exams that what is the most commonly injured ligament? You know very well that only lateral side is injured commonly, not in the medial side, in the ankle joint, is it not? In the lateral ligaments, you have a so for three ligaments: uh, uh, talo fibular, calcaneo fibular, and posterior talo fibular. Everything will have a fibula because that is the bone in the lateral aspect. So, uh, in among these uh, three, anterior fibers are commonly injured. Otherwise, you can easily remember. If you have to flex like this only. So, what is the structure in front? Yeah, that only, you are not, you are not falling like this, is it not? You are flexing on the, I mean, uh, dorsiflexing. So, obviously, the anterior structure will come in uh, uh, at the risk at first. Okay. So, anterior talofibular ligament is the weakest ligament and most often injured ligament. Ankle injury is usually 80 percent involved lateral ligaments and less one I mean less than 20 percent only the delta ligament. So, in the lateral how do you injure inversion this is the inversion mechanism. So, inversion the first casualty is anterior talo fibular ligament. See this is this is the ligament which commonly you get injured. Injuries around the ankle joint occurs at inversion of the foot. In, this question has been asked in last meet also I think. I, I forgot to include that most commonly injured ligament around the ankle joint. They keep asking in all exams. Anterior talofibula, anterior talofibula, lateral ligament in the lateral anterior deltoid is rarely injured because deltoid is a strong ligament. Most commonly affected component, they keep asking in various exams. Lateral collateral, lateral collateral ligament complex and ankle sprain is anterior component, anterior component that is anterior talofibular ligament. If the foot is suddenly inverted in a plantar, see this is plantar flexed. So, plantar flexion means anterior structure is going to be uh, injured first. So, in a plantar flex position, which of the following ligament will be injured? They, 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 they will be asking in different ways, the same question they will be asking, but you should be very careful. No, this is plantar flexion. This is plantar flexion. So, the plantar flexion is you are taking the foot plantar ward means this is the structure anteriorly. So, that is the first is going to get stretched. If you dorsiflex it, the post is the structure is going to be stretched at first. You understand? So, the structure is whichever is anterior, when you stretch like this, that is the structure going to be stretched first. So, uh, inverted in a plantar flexed position. You understand? 